y'all welcome back to my channel today we are going to be doing something a little bit different and i am going to walk you through my at home spa routine self-care routine this is going to be more of like a treatment routine that i do at home as an esthetician if you're new to my channel hi welcome my name is zach i'm a makeup artist and medical esthetician based in toronto canada when all the craziness happened back in 2020 i stopped working in a clinic setting then i really stopped going into clinics and then that led me to start wanting to figure out how I can reap some of the benefits of the things that we would do in clinic at home. I went on the hunt for a bunch of different tools, products, and I'm going to share with you what those tools and products, they're helping to keep my skin looking its best without having to go into a spa or a salon. So the first big thing with this is it's all about setting the ambient environment. Whenever you go into a clinic, it always has a very pleasant smell. It's always quite dim. It's just very, very relaxing. I always like to start with a candle and the candle I'm using currently is this one from Joe Malone. This is one of their townhouse collection candles and this is the pastel macaroon candle. These are really expensive but they smell really good and they burn for quite a while. So candles going off to the side. We are going to start with our first step which is going to be cleansing the skin. You want to make sure you're wearing something that's nice and comfy relaxed. I love just wearing like a pair of pajamas that are really like soft and comfy and breathable. They allow me to move because when doing a lot of these treatments you want to be able to really move. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my hair out of my way. So I always like using one of these little wet brushes because they don't pull or snag the hair. And then if you go ahead and get your hair out of the way now you're not going to have to worry about it getting all over the place later. And it should go without saying that you want to start with clean hands because we are going to be doing a lot of touching on the face. So much like a classic facial you always start by cleansing the skin. And I'm someone who enjoys a double cleanse every single day but especially when you're doing a treatment night when you're really looking to nurture your skin you want to make sure you're doing this two-step cleanse the first one being an oil based to get off everything that you might have on so currently all i have on is my morning skincare and sunscreen so i'm going to start with my current favorite oil cleanser this is the kose softy mo and you want to start with dry hands dry face i use about two pumps and then work your way around the face when you're working with your face, a lot of people, you'll see them and they go to cleanse and stuff like that and they're just using their fingertips. It's very gentle. You need to add a little bit of pressure. When we're in aesthetics, you use gentle but firm pressure. So you're not pressing onto your face, but you want to massage and manipulate it. That way you're kind of just breaking up everything. I always like to kind of start my way from the top and work my way down, which is opposite from the way we do in aesthetics. Because normally within aesthetics, we work away from the decollete up to the neck and then up towards the forehead. When I'm working around the face, I like to use different pressures, different fingers. Middle and ring finger tend to have the least amount of pressure. I like to use those around the eye area. And then working down to the nose, I like to spend a few extra moments here because a lot of people are prone to an oily buildup on the sides of the nose. This is, for most people, a highly sebaceous area. So that means it's going to be a higher production of oil. So I really like to work in the sides here, work into the nasal labials, and then bring in the rest of the fingers and just massage. Now there's no right or wrong. You can work down, you can work up, and really kind of put my fingers right under the muscles of the cheek. Lift and pull back. And some people say lifting is great for the facial muscles. There's other things you can do that work a little bit better. I just like it because it feels good. And when you're doing your own facial massage at home, that's really what you wanna pay attention for is what feels good. And then just to keep things simple, I've already cleansed my neck and my chest to remove all of my sunscreen before I started the video. So we're just working on kind of like the jawline. A great trick if you're someone who has a lot of tension in the jaw or you're someone who has a lot of fluid retention in the jaw, take your hands almost like a pincer shape and use it to work back. And then this is great for just draining and relaxing the muscles. If you're in your bathroom, you can easily just step in the shower and rinse this off. And now, since I'm in my office, I'm going to cleanse. So I really love these reusable, large, kind of like microfiber discs. These are from e.l.f. and they're wonderful for gently massaging, giving you a little bit of a gentle exfoliation. So I like to start on the eyes, hold, and then just very gently kind of massage. Small circular motions. You're using barely any pressure. And then wipe down and out and then on the forehead. I like to work from the center of the brow up and out. And make sure you're getting right up to the hairline because right through here, whether it's sunscreen or makeup, a lot of people have a lot of excess residual product there. So you wanna make sure you're cleansing that. Especially if you're someone who doesn't wash your hair every day, right through here, a lot of people will get a buildup. So just make sure you're taking the extra time to really cleanse around the hairline. 
sunscreen, makeup, that's all started to break down and we've done our first step oil cleanse. Now we're gonna go in with our second cleanse, which is going to be like your skin cleanse. Think of that first step cleanse as being the step that removes all the dirt, debris, grime, oil, and your second step cleanser with a cream or gel cleanser, whatever you prefer, which whether feels best for your skin, is going to be the one that really helps you cleanse the skin. Since my skin is more normal to oily, I like a gel cleanser. And currently the one I'm using is the Dr. Sam's Flawless Cleanser. So with this, I normally like to do about two pumps. Just get a small amount in your hand and then add a little bit of water to your palm. And this is going to help you emulsify the product. And then we're gonna basically repeat what we did with that first cleanse. Remember gentle but firm pressure. So once you have that cleanser spread evenly across the face, now we're gonna go back in with our fingertips and start massaging it in. Around the eyes, I always like to go counterclockwise because right through here we have a drainage point. So if you're someone who holds a lot of fluid around the eye areas, your eyes get puffy, press, hold right through here. That will help to reduce some of that fluid that you're retaining. Right over the eyelids. All right, and then you can just remove. Now we're gonna move on to more of that treatment step. For me, my treatment changes a little bit each week as I do something a little bit different to address a different point of concern with my skin. If you're someone who has pretty normal skin, you don't have any big concerns, this could be the point where you exfoliate, you put on a face mask, maybe use a skincare device, but I like to rotate because I do have different concerns. So after I cleanse, to add a little bit of moisture to the skin so that way it doesn't dry out and I don't experience trans epidermal water loss or dehydration, from evaporation of water from the skin, I like to spray a little bit of something on the skin. And for me, since I am prone to breakouts, especially here along the nose area, I like to use something that's gonna help reduce bacteria on the skin. And for that, I really enjoy using the Skin Smart Antimicrobial Eczema Therapy Spray. This just helps to kill bacteria and anything that isn't used by the skin, it just turns into saline and then evaporates. Now, depending on which device I'm going to use, if I'm going to be doing kind of like maybe a face mask or I'm going to be using my Kinsey device, which we'll talk about later, then I might do a manual exfoliant on the skin. Now, a manual exfoliation for me happens right now about one to two times a month, and I don't have one that I love in particular. I just use whatever I'm testing out at the moment. Currently, I'm testing out this Clean and Clear Daily or Cleanser with Gentle Microscopers. Cleanses away impurities to leave skin soft and smooth. This is one I used to use a lot in my early 20s. It is leaking water because <laughs> I just brought it out of my shower and I'll still use this about one to two days before I use my Kinsey device. That way I can make sure that when the IPL device hits it, there's no skin sitting on top. So that way when I go to shave, I'm getting the cleanest shave possible. So that way the IPL device can really do its magic. Then on some other weekends, and this is maybe once a month to once every month and a half, maybe even two months, I'll use more of a heavy hitting chemical exfoliant to almost do a minor at home peel. And for that one, I love the Drunk Elephant Sukari Baby Facial. This is a mix of a 25% AHA and a 2% BHA. This is very potent. And if you've never tried this before, I strongly recommend doing a test patch. Normally when we test patch, it will do it right back through here. Something like this is going to be very potent. Here in Canada, we do not sell this over the counter. I have to pick it up when I go to the US. And that's because this is very, very potent. The directions say you can leave it on for up to 20 minutes. For me, I'm about a five, maybe 10 minute, depending on just how my skin's feeling. But even though I use this for a shorter duration than it calls for on the directions, I still reap the benefits because the next day when I wake up, my skin is very, very smooth. And it's just all around feels a little bit more even toned. But to maintain the integrity of my skin, I use this very, very infrequently. So this bottle will last me the better part of a year. Today, I wanted to do a little bit of extracting and some minor exfoliation. I'm gonna be using my ultrasonic skin scrubber from the brand Dermaflash. Now with this, you need to use it on damp skin, which we'll cover in just a moment. And on how you use it, you can either use it with the curve pointed down to do a little bit of extracting, or you can use it flat to help infuse the serums. If I'm being honest, I never use it on the side to infuse my serums. I use this once every two weeks maybe to do a little bit of extracting and make sure you're cleaning it after every use. I will gently clean it with a little bit of soap and water and then I'll take some alcohol and 
and wipe over it. And then before I use it again, like I'm doing right now, I'll take alcohol and clean over it again. And since you need to do this on damp skin, I recommend doing it at your bathroom so you can splash water on from the sink. I'm not near a sink, so I'm using my Aven thermal water. And with this, you just do a general mist. Editing Zach here. So this part, I did talk all the way through about how I use the skin spatula to go through and smooth over everything. I had to turn the volume all the way down because it is an ultra sonic device. It has this vibrating sound. The microphone on my phone, it made this really horrible screeching sound. So I'm going to fast forward through this. I'm going to mute it, turn the background music up. So that way you're not hearing the same screeching noise that I ran across when editing the video. Basically all we do is hold the skin taut and then use the curved head to smooth over the skin. Hold, hold, hold. And at some points you will see a little bit of buildup. That buildup that you're seeing is any type of residual product that is still on top of the skin. Mix of sebaceous filaments, dead skin cells, all that mix. If you don't want to um, see any of that, just skip forward. I'll have a timestamp down below when this is over. So next time we know not to use the tool on camera because it makes that buzzy noise. Now that that's finished, we've done some extraction. We've cleared away some of the dead skin cells. I'm gonna use my Skin Spark spray again, just to kill any bacteria on the surface. And while that's kind of doing its thing, we're gonna talk about one of the other tools I use. Occasionally, I will do some at-home dermoplaning. You use a blade. In clinic, we use a scalpel. I'm using one right now by the brand Stacked Skincare. What I like about this one is it is a safety razor, but it's very, very sharp and you can replace it. So this does have some replacement blades. With this one, you want to hold it very lightly, hold the skin taut, and then you're going to go over and do that. I'm not doing this today because I just did some exfoliation with my skin spatula. And with exfoliation, you want to stick to one method at a time because more is more is not always the best thing for the skin. So stick to one, call it a day. That's why I like to rotate them. This is another one I'll do about once a month. And this is great for removing Bella's hair. Once again, removing dead skin sitting on the surface. It's just a really nice product, but be very careful make sure you're using very gentle pressure holding the skin taut and then it's just a small little motion downwards and you go down with the direction of any hair growth if you're doing this removal of Bella's hair. Next device I'm going to share with you is one that once again I use about once a month. This is one I got for Christmas and I love it. This is from the brand Trophy Skin and this is called the Ultra Derm Pro. So when it flips open you have this little display but there is a little button right here and you press and it turns on. So there's a few different modes. You have auto, manual, sensitive, kinetic, and pores. I strongly do not recommend the pore. The pore treatment is basically one of those like little pore vacuums that went really viral over the pandemic and you can just do a lot of damage with that. And that's similar to how I feel with the kinetic. I know recently kinetic facial tools are becoming very, very popular for toning the skin. If you're not familiar with what kinetic toning is, it's small bits of suck which suck the skin and release. And that's supposed to help you stimulate collagen and elastin and firm up the skin. A few videos back, you might've noticed I had a bruise right here on my forehead and I mentioned I used a tool without reading directions. And yeah, I tried out the kinetic toning for the first time without reading directions. So with this, I like to turn it on to manual. And here you have your little diamond tip. This is for microdermabrasion. If you'll put your finger over, you'll feel a little bit of suction. And there's some different power levels. I start with level four. And then I'm going to show you up my neck, gently up and pull. This does use a little bit of suction. You have this diamond bit grit, which is going to do a little bit of exfoliation. Since I'm not near my bathroom sink, I'm gonna take my spray and mist around. This is one I do enjoy. I feel like this is a nice alternative for in office or in clinic microdermabrasion. However, this is not going to give you the same impact and smoothness that you would get from an in office treatment. This is a lot more gentle. And normally with the ones we use in, in clinic, you can adjust the suction 
construction. The tips that we use, I feel like they're a little bit rougher. This one, it has a texture to it. It has a grit to it, but it's it's a lot more mild than what we use, which I think for at home is really, really good. I really enjoy this. So once a month, I will use this. And this is just another form of exfoliation. It does have a little bit of suction. So you are getting a tiny bit of that kinetic benefit with the added benefit of the microderm abrasion. So exfoliation, toning, win-win, not going to be the same impact that it does in office. But if you're someone who can't afford to always go in for a microderm abrasion, or you're someone who likes to do things yourself, I feel like if you use something like this at home and you just keep in mind that you need to go slow and steady with your speed, like for me, I think this goes up to a level 12. I'm a licensed esthetician. I've got my certificates. I've worked on lots of people and I only take this up to four. It is better to be safe than sorry. Don't do what I do. Read the directions, then use this. Now we are going to get into a skincare device that has been making its way around social media for the last few years. And there's still some mixed word if people see a benefit or not. What really sold me on this is this went from kind of being something that sat on the shelf. You would see it at Nordstrom or some other department stores. And then it began making its way in clinic. And that is the new face device. I have the new face mini because I wanted to try it out. Part of me wants to get the Tria so I can have the smaller attachment for around the eyes, but for now, this does well for me. So with this, I do have the previous iteration of their gel primer. This is a conducting gel. <laughs> a lot of people, there's I've heard some speculation that some people are saying that the gel is what does all the work and it's not the device. That's not true. Like if we look through this and you look through the ingredients, basically this is a hydrating gel primer. It's going to conduct the microcurrent and allow it to get from the device to stimulate the muscles. Any benefit you notice from this, you're going to probably notice a temporary swelling, plumping of the skin cells from the hyaluronic acid. This does not do the heavy lifting of the treatment. It's some people use aloe gel and they get the same effect. I just use this because this is what I have. So when you're using your new face device, I use the tip of my finger as a reference point and I break my face in a quadrant. So the first quadrant is going to be on my cheek. So for this, it goes from under my eye to the temple and down. And I'll even pull it through here. You wanna make sure you have a nice thick layer. We're gonna go through the first section together and then I'll fast forward the rest. Place, you might feel a tiny little bit of pulsation on the muscle. That is normal, that is controlled traction of the muscles. So slow, steady, lift. Hold at the top and move on. I like to repeat each section three times. So when I'm doing this in my own routine, I'll go one, two, and three. Then hold at the back. That's going to engage the muscle to create the hold. Then again, you're going right above that. So I like to do about a 25% overlap. Hold at the top. And then one more time, and then move on to your final section. So hold up, you're hugging the cheekbone, wrapping up towards the temple. Two and three. And when I have a little bit extra time, I like to take the device, place it right on the bone and press up and then do it again. And one more time. And then you're gonna go to the next section. So press up and two and three. Final section, you're gonna start on the cheek, press up towards the under eye area. Next section, and third section. And then where we apply gel down here, if you don't have a mustache or facial hair, you can go around the lip area, but I like to just hold right here at the outer corner for a count of three. So two, and three. So now if we look side to side, you will see a very subtle lifting effect. When using your new face device, consistency is key. You need to use it almost every day for six weeks to get that initial benefit. And something else I feel like a lot of people don't mention, which is something we tell clients in office when doing an, an office microcurrent treatment is it takes time and this is like a workout. You can't do one set of bicep curls and then expect to have like 
like bodybuilder sculpted supermodel arms. It's not going to happen. Your microcurrent device is like an ongoing workout routine for your facial muscles. At first, you'll notice a very modest lift and it will kind of go away within a few hours. As you continue to do it, the, the benefits will last a little bit longer and then your treatment can be spaced out a little bit more. But at first, that consistency is key and the benefit is coming from the electric microcurrent. It is stimulating contractions within the muscle to create a lifting and toning effect. So I'm gonna fast forward through the rest of my face and we'll be continuing on to the next step. We're going to talk about a tool I use pretty much weekly, my Kinsey device, in my glowing body skincare video. I mentioned the original Kinsey device. I did pick up the newer version when I was in the US because I was very intrigued by the two little filters it has. So two new attachments it has, which are not compatible with the previous version. You have one for acne and inflammation, and then you have another one for age spots and toning the skin. So here I have the acne attachment, which is a red filter. And with this, it's magnetic and it just sticks on. The cord that comes with this is very, very generous. With this one, I use the acne attachment to treat any active breakouts I have. You're only supposed to use this once a week, so I only use it once a week. But for any active breakouts I have or anywhere that is due to inflammation, since the red filter is anti-inflammatory. So since I do wear glasses, I can get an indent here on the side of my nose. And since I do also have rosacea, I'm prone to dilated and broken capillaries. So I'll take this, hold the skin taut, angle in, close the eyes, snap, snap, snap. With my skin, I am a Fitzpatrick one, bordering on two, depending on the time of the year. So with this device, I can go full strength and I can do the full three within the the instruction manual, there will be different skin tones, which it is just to use for. In clinic, generally Fitzpatrick's one through three to four are who we normally use IPL on. Depending on the machine, you can go up to Fitzpatrick five and six, but it's better safe than sorry. And generally Fitzpatrick skin tones five and six do better with laser because there's less risk of rebound hyperpigmentation. Weekly, I do use this without the filter. So I will do my exfoliating and shaving one to two days before I use this. And I will We'll use this anywhere that I want to get rid of unwanted hair and right now where I really like it for is my neck because when I go like shaving right through here I get a lot of irritation I will use this just to go through and clean up my neckline and it's helping to reduce how much I get especially like right through here I've got less hair like my hair follicles where they used to kind of be active right through here it's kind of like this like little triangular patch it's no longer coming in whereas on this side it still is so your hair grows in cycles that's why when you, you do it weekly it takes a little bit of time, it takes patience. Any of these skincare tools to really get benefits, it's going to take time and patience. Let's move on to some skincare tools I use every single day. And these are just products I love in combination with the skincare I'm using, which I will link that video in the end screen of my current skincare team. I feel like since I've used, started doing that, when I wake up in the morning and throughout the day, I have less redness than I did. And, and my overall kind of feeling of my skin started really changing within a few weeks of using these products. Now, at first, I didn't really see results, which is to be expected. Skin damage, skin concerns, they don't really occur overnight. They take time to kind of come to the surface and make themselves known. Same thing goes for the benefits. It takes time to see results. With these tools, I started using them when I got home from vacation, which was around January 7th. And now here we are in mid-April. They've really helped my skin. A lot of stimulation with my skin this evening, and I am looking a little pink, which is to be expected when you manipulate the skin, you are going to stimulate, which can cause some flushing to the skin. The tools I'm talking about are LED treatments. LED stands for light emitting diode. Generally, we'll use red light for anti-aging purposes. Blue light will be used for anti-acting purposes. I have a mix of red and blue light. First one we're gonna look at for the face is one that I got for Christmas. This is the Dr. Dennis Gross face mask. This looks like a little like C3 PO face mask. I really, really like this. Part of me wishes I would have got the Omnilux one because this, where it is kind of a hard plastic face shape, I need to, once I get it over my face, I need to almost like kind of stretch it a little bit and then press down. And that is how I can get the most contact because you need to make sure you're getting full contact. Now with this device, you have a button right here. You press it once, you'll get a red light, which is good for anti-aging. Press it twice, you'll get a blue light, which is good 
for acne and inflammation and then press it three times you will get a mix of both technically i could do the red blue light blend but i feel like i get better benefits if i do them separately so one day i'll do red light one day i will do blue light so that way i'm getting a mix of both of them and you'll notice here where the eye socket is there is a cutout right here which if we look at where that is it's not hitting my curse which are right through here and even though i get botox that is a place that concerns me because I'm someone, I'm I'm a very happy person. I emote, I express, and I enjoy life. Even with getting Botox consistently for the last five years. Oh wow, I've been getting Botox for longer than five years. I started when I was 25, I'm 32. Going on seven years. Wow. <laughs> you can see I I move my face, I can scrunch like through here takes the longest because the glabellar muscle is where I put most of my attention, but through here I can still move and function, I can move my brows, but right through here where I talk, I laugh, I express, my eyes right here crinkle up, which is normal, it's human. I don't want to be void of those things, but I want to age well. <laughs> That led me into picking up this device, which is also from Dr. Dennis Gross. Is it Gross or Gross? I'm not sure. But anyway, this is just red light, so anti-aging, and this is a little like eye goggle. It only, it's like I mentioned, it's only gonna have the red light, and then it is for treating around the eye area. So you're getting the glabellar, you're getting into the under eye, and you're getting the crow's feet area. I, <laughs> I'll use this during the day, I'll use this one at night, and um, yeah, only time I don't use this on nights when I use my active tretinoin and that's because you're not supposed to mix the two of them together so I use tretinoin three nights a week and that means the other four nights a week, I will use this. I've mentioned in a few other videos, I've struggled with body acne since I was about 13. So for over half of my life now, I've struggled with body acne. And you would think as you got older, it would get better, but um, it, it's a struggle. I, <laughs> I thought everything was cleared up and going really well. And then I got stressed and yeah, it, it just, I just kind of like broke out horribly, but I've been using a device, I, I have a topical retinoid for my dermatologist which I use on like my trunk area to help with breakouts and that really helps using a well-rounded body care routine with good skin like ingredients has really helped me but sometimes I need a little extra nudge and for that I like this is the light stem for acne it is a blue light device it has a little button you switch on and off you'll plug it in and what I like about this is since it is a flat wand you can hold it over a breakout and which makes it great for getting areas of the body and you you can kind of pay on your dexterity. You can reach pretty much anywhere on the body, but you've got a handle. So even for like the very middle of the shoulder blades, you can reach it. Now I'm very fortunate. I have a lot of dexterity and flexibility within my body. I can kind of reach anywhere I want to, but this has just been a great kind of like saving grace for that. And then something I've been using for scalp care, which I got to go in conjunction with my PRP treatments is this laser LED helmet from the brand. I believe it's from the brand Theradome. It just says, yeah, it's from Theradome. And it is, it has a wavelength of 680 nanometers. Hmm, good to know. So this uses a mix of laser and LED. And what this does is it just like this. So if you follow me on Instagram, then I've posted this a few times on my story and it looks really silly. It works. I, I mean, it's worked. I was looking the other day at some pictures that I've been taking. So I started taking pictures of my scalp because I'm someone who struggles with male, male pattern hair loss. So kind of right here through the recession, I've noted, I've noticed some recession through here and as well as an overall kind of thinning through the top area of my head. So I've been doing PRP. I'm doing a series of four treatments to start one month apart, but to enhance that in combination with my topical mendoxal or topical Rogaine foam, I have been using this. It says use it every other day. I use it daily. I use this when I'm editing videos at my computer and I will just put this on and let it go. I was so hesitant to pick this up because I mean, these are really expensive. Like I think this is around $500 here in Canada. Could be mistaken. I remember I got this in the US right before Christmas because Sephora was having a sale on their tools. So I picked up this and this both with like 20 or 25% off. But this, I paid full price. I bought this from the place that is doing my PRP treatments for my scalp. And I don't remember if this was, it was either 1600 or 1800. It's, it was really expensive.
expensive. It was very expensive and I was very hesitant to buy it. But it's interesting because between this, the PRP, using my minidoxyl and just kind of like the different stuff I've been using over the last year to help with my scalp, whenever I feel like something's not working, I'll like be in the shower, washing my hair and like right through here. It's so odd and it just, it makes me kind of giddy talking about it because through here, I can feel like these baby hairs coming up. It's almost like, it almost feels like AstroTurf coming in, but like right through here, down at the root, you can feel this new hair and like right through here, you can't really see it on camera because it is like blonde vellus peach fuzz, but through here is like this layer of blonde, like fuzzy baby hair, which it's, I feel that's promising because that wasn't there a year ago. So that was a very long, very kind of chatty video but these are how I take care of my skin on a weekly kind of self-care routine. I'm going to my, do my best to kind of cut things down, fast forward through bits, so you can still kind of see what I'm doing, but just have a little bit quicker so you're not sitting here all day. If you found this enjoyable, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and if you haven't subscribed and you're still here, go ahead and subscribe. Clearly you enjoyed this. <laughs> I will see you all in the next video and in the comments, leave me a comment with what you like to do at your at-home self-care routine. Have you tried any of these tools or devices? Do you have something different that you like to use? What do you do to help keep your skin looking and feeling its best? I would love to know. Until the next video, I will hope you all take care of yourself and I will see you later. Bye.